my name is Sue Pruitt. Thank you for joining me on this demonstration. I'd like to paint one of these cherries for you so you can see how to use the Decorate Traditions paint along with the extender and blending medium. This is a picture of my painting because I don't have the actual painting with me at the moment. And this is what I set up on my table. As you can see, they look very similar. It's pretty easy to do when you have something to look at and you can see where the values are and the shadows, where they fall and, and so forth. These are the supplies I'm gonna use. I've got a wax palette paper, some Traditions brushes, a 10 filbert, eight filbert, six filbert, three outliner, and some mini mops. I've got a zero and a one mini mop and also a 10 dome blender. Also used a large flat brush to uh, put the paint on my surface. And like I said, I'm gonna use the Decorate Traditions paint. This isn't all of them. These are the ones I used for the background. I mixed Snapthal Red, Brown Matter, and Red Violet all one to one. Put just a tiny titch of uh, black in it to darken it a little bit. I've got a little container that I'm using for my extender medium. And one side I use to clean out my brush. You can see it's a little dirty there. I'm cleaning out my brush now. And the other side is for clean when I need it. I'm going to have a large brush to apply the extender medium with. Clean brush, and that's all I'm going to use that for. I'm going to do my best to if I forget one. I'm going to do my best to keep my palette and palette paper in the picture, but sometimes I need to get a close up and so then that's when you won't see that. I've gone ahead and uh, painted my background and it's a, it's a, a dark red like I just explained. And then what I did was I came down three and a quarter inches and just made a darker value adding black of this table color. Now the red's nice because the cherries have red in it and this will allow us to create some lost edges by putting the red around the outside of the cherries. As you can see now, this edge is a little flat and that's because it's such a different temperature contrast and value contrast to the background. So we're going to use that red around the outsides to create lost edges. And what I'm going to do I'm going to put some extender and blending medium on this. I'm just going to paint one cherry for you. Go much faster. And there's a little line right here that I'm going to try to keep in there. I've got a tin filbert. I'm going to do this in a, a layering technique. Of course, I'm going to be blending, but it's you draw it, going to dry it between applications. When you put the extender medium on, you don't want a lot of extender medium. You don't want it dripping down. It should look like a sheen as if you just, you know, you're putting a coat of varnish on and you want to get it very smooth. So on my palette, I have warm white, medium white, yellow oxide, naphthal red light, naphthal red, Red Violet, Ultramarine Blue, Brown Matter, Carbon Black, and these, uh, did I say hence Yellow Medium? And these are my two background colors. You always want to keep a little bit of those for touch-ups. Now to lighten this, I'm going to go ahead and make a lighter yellow. I'm going to take the two yellows, add some warm white. This one a lighter, a little bit lighter that into your brush both sides and I'm using a tin filbert and I usually start with the, the largest brush and as I layer and work within smaller areas building up the values then the brushes you know get smaller in size. So I'm just going to put this in this upper right quadrant which is 
where my light source is. I'm going to leave just a little space in between there. So once you get this on, I'm going to pinch the brush, wipe it out on my paper towel, and then I'm going to come around the outside and just soften the transition area. This extender medium allows you to do this. You know, it, it keeps the paint open so you can blend with it. And we've got some very nice blender brushes that you, know, you can get in there and just tap. This is the number one mop, mini mop, that is. You can still see that, just a little tiny bit of a separation there. And while that's still moist with the extender medium, I'm going to rinse out my brush and my extender and blending medium and then just, you know, tap it on my paper towel to get rid of that color. Then we'll come in with some red. I'm going to pick up a little bit on the side of my brush. This is the Naphtha Red Light. I'm just blending it into the brush. Let me turn this. This is where we're going to put it all around the outside to start that lost edge. If you want to use a smaller brush, you can. I'm just coming up on the side of the brush. You know, not flattening it down all the way because I don't want to mess up my highlight too much. So yeah, offload it in this lower left first because that's where you're going to have the most color. Red that is. And then with what you have left on your brush, just come around the outside. You can wipe out your brush. Soften this line. You can just use the tip of the filbert to do that with. I'm going to come back with my mini mop. I can tap to blend those together. Just softening this. We also have a tin dome blender that is very nice because with this you can just tap. And you do want to create a little bit of a, a textured look because these cherries aren't perfectly um, smooth looking. This is the this is the painting, but I want to show you the actual picture. See how it's got some nice little uh, variation of lights and darks, just kind of right within there. So it's not like it's perfectly you know, solid red, because it isn't. So you can do a little tapping to create that look. Now if I was going to work on the other cherries, I would just move over and start working on those. But since I'm just doing this demonstration on one cherry, I'll go ahead and dry this with the hair dryer. Now drying with the hair dryer will heat set the paint and keep it from lifting the next time that you put the extender medium on. Uh, if you just let it dry for, you know, on its own, like five minutes, you might come back and put the extender medium on and what'll happen is you'll move the paint onto your background. And that is not what you want to do. So go ahead and dry that with the hair dryer. Go ahead and put some more extender medium on the surface. Also, I base coated these stems with just a brush mix of Hansi Yellow Medium plus Ultramarine Blue. And I'm just using a liner brush and just tapping in the color. Let that 
dry. I've gone ahead and gone down in size in my brush. Now I've got an eight filbert. I'm gonna use the same mixture of the two yellows and warm white and build that highlight. Just a little lighter, a little more warm white within a smaller area. And if you've kind of lost your other one with maybe your red stretching out too much, stretch this out a little bit. Use these little mini mops. You don't want to put them in water. You just want to wipe them off on your paper towel because you don't want to get those wet. Just kind of tapping this on on the outside. You can actually work wet into wet with the extender, which is nice. For instance, if I want to add a little bit more light within a smaller area, I'm going to pick up some same mixture. I'm just going to pick up some more of the warm white. This time I'll try to make it within a smaller area. Wipe that off. Just tapping with the brush. Next, I'm going to rinse out that brush in some water, blot it on my paper towel. And what you want to do is anytime you're using the extender medium, you want to have extender in your brush, not water. So after I rinse that out, I'm going to just blot it into the extender medium and you know tap that on my my paper towel. Now I'm going to come into the naphtha red working this into both sides of the brush starting in the darkest area which is the lower left I'm just not going to take it out as far this time I want to see a little bit of this other value that we have here. Just with the tip, I'm going to pull some around the outsides. Remember, we need those edges to get closer in color and temperature value to the background so those are, look round. We do want round cherries. I'll just softly tap that. One thing I do want to point out is anytime that you're painting a grouping of the same object, like cherries, you want each of them to have their own personality. You don't want to paint them all exactly the same. And what I did on my painting here. I made sure that I had one that had more yellow in it, uh, one that had, you know, a lot more red, and this one has a little bit of both. And this one I just have a little bit of yellow. My focal area is in this area where I have everything the lightest. The stem up here, this has more yellow, so it's, it's these two cherries with the stem there. going to put my brush in some extender medium get a get rid of a little bit of that red now let's go ahead and put the start the cast shadow because we need to build that up also I'm going to come into the upper background color the darker one and we're going to start that up underneath Pull it, as a, you know, a sit down shadow, pull it underneath. We have just a little dotted line indicating 
how far out that will go. So you start where it's going to be the darkest and then just blend it outwards. And I think this is tacked up a little bit, this green. I'm going to go ahead and add some light and dark. So we're going to leave the center green. The right side is going to have some light, the left side is going to have some dark. This one is actually in shadow, as you can see on the picture here. This is the original picture. So this one in the, the back is actually dark. Uh, this one over the top will be the lightest because it's catching the most light. And you can see this is pretty light up here also. For this one, I'm not going to put a lot of light on it, but I do want to show you, you know, how you would paint a stem. I'm just going to brush mix those two yellows together. And this one is behind. I'm just going to put a little bit of light on the right side. And it doesn't have to be perfect line you like just you know straight line all the way down just just do a hit and miss a little tapping think about it's not a, a a shiny pipe or anything it's just a a stem that has variations and then with some of the background color I'm just going to get a dirty brush some of this background I'm going to put a little bit of red on the left side. And again, I'm just tapping it in. Try not to have it all the same red all the way down. Just hit and miss a little area. And again, this one is somewhat in the background. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer again. Again, I've gone ahead and put on some extender medium. Just need to build up a couple more values of light and a couple more values of dark. Add some more dark under the cast shadow and a little red reflection on the table here. So to go lighter, we just have to keep working with our yellows. This time I'm just going to do the Hansi yellow medium plus warm white. Remember I've got extender medium in my brush, not water. Water is uh, the solvent to paint, so it's going to thin out the extender and that's not what we want to do. So as long as you can see that this is a little lighter, again I'm working within smaller area. Pinch that out of my brush. You can soften with the tip of the filbert. If the paint moves around too much, that means that you're using too much extender medium. It should blend very uh, evenly, you know, without moving around too much. And I'm just barely touching the surface with it tip of the filbert. And of course when you need to refine it a little more. I don't think I do, but just in case you can tap it with your mini mop. Now to go darker, the darker color we have on here is red violet. And I'm going to brush mix the red violet with some of the Napathol red first. On this one and see how that looks. We're we'll starting in the darkest crescent area. Again, I don't want to carry this up as far or in as far. This is how you build values, just working within smaller areas. And the more values you have, the more dimension, and the more realistic it looks. out my brush. My brush is half on 
one value half on the other. Now remember, this is actually going to be the lightest cherry of the three. But I am trying to show you how you build lots of values. The dome blender, tapping that. Just don't want a line of value in between, like a hard line here, because your eye would automatically go to that line. And the acrylic paint does dry a value darker. So you always have to judge it when it's dry. I'm going to rinse that red violet out of the brush and I like to put just a little tiny bit of a red in between here. It's coming with the naphthol red light. I do not want much paint on the brush. It's just a, a little hint of red here. Turn this around. Pull it towards me. That's just to indicate a, a, a small indentation there. If you make that indentation too dark and it, it'll look too deep and it's not really that deep on cherries. Just a soft color change there. Let's strengthen the cast shadow. This time I'll come in with the darker background color. Up closer to the object and underneath. Let's just keep it from floating. Have to anchor it down to the table. Just blending the outer edge of that. Now, if you let this tack up a little bit like this highlight. I could probably go back in and stack some more light on there. So I'm going to try to pick up just a little bit more of the warm white. A little bit more. This stronger highlight is just is going to be to the left side. What you don't want to do is, is have equal, like over here, put a highlight, because there's really just this one major highlight. And that is a circle shape because it's the object is round. So next time we'll come just put a sparkle warm white in there. There is a reflection on the surface, and I'm going to show you how it is on the actual table. Do you see that it's it's a little mud mottled? It's not like a clean, crisp, shiny um, reflection. And the reason for that is because the table it was a matte table. It wasn't a high gloss table. So if it was a high gloss, you might see more of a, a hard edge line, like a mirror image. But this was not. So and this is how I, I did it. You can see it's just, it's not refined. It's just, you can, you can tell it's a circle shape, but it's very soft. I'm gonna come in with the naphthol red, and this is my larger filbert. I'm gonna drop down a little bit. I'm 
just tap it on with the tip of the filbert. And I will probably build this up a couple times. It's better to do it a couple times um, instead of just one major time. Because you never want to take paint off. You don't want to, you know, put too much. You don't want to be scrubbing paint off. And the next time I put it on, it wouldn't be exactly the same. It might be modeled a little different looking, so I'll add more interest. Just a little bigger because it is a very large cherry. <laughs> That's so you can see it under the camera. <laughs> Now I'm going to dry this again, but not before I put just a little bit more color on the stem. Again, remember this one is in shadow, but I'm not painting the entire painting. So we want to give it a little life so you can see that. A little yellow on the right, a little background color on the left. I'm going to dry this and put final dark and light. I've got my extender medium on. I've got some warm white in the brush. And I'm just going to tap this down and see what that looks like. That looks like that accepts it pretty well on that value. Sometimes if you jump values too fast, you put it on there and it, it just doesn't look like it, it belongs but I'm going to leave that. And I'm just barely going to tap around the outside. Just a little tiny bit. I'm going to take the white out of the brush, get all of that white out of the brush, I have to use the water, extend a medium back in, I'm going to come in with some Napathel Red light, and I just want to put a little bit of this warm red Just here and there. Adds a little warmth to that. And then I'm going to brush mix some of the red violet. Plus a little bit of that background color. The darker one. Mm, that's a nice color. So I'm just going to keep it just in that lower left crescent area. And that's good. I'm going to come with some dark background plus carbon black. something just a little darker up underneath the object for the cast shadow. Oops.
going to add a little bit more red on the foreground. Clean out my brush, put some extended medium in it. See, I can't see that very well. It dried, but it's, it's good to just build this color up. There's a couple things to remember when you're painting that grouping. Try not to have them look all exactly the same. Have one a little darker, one a little lighter, one a little more yellow in it. You know, variety is good. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this demo. And if you have any questions about the Traditions Acrylics, you can email me at suepruitt at artapprenticeonline.com. Until next time, bye-bye.